Hi friends, Katie here. If you love practicing with me on YouTube, check out my Patreon uh, page, www.patreon.com dash Katie Yoga. Um, I would love to have you as one of my patrons. I offer free little perks, free classes, free um, post tutorials. So check it out. I'll put the link in the comments. Namaste. So feel free. And hi everyone on Facebook. So we'll go ahead and get started, you guys, just in a comfortable seat. As you're ready, I was trying to get Ruby to come over with me, but she's just too comfortable. All right, so as you're ready, just find stillness and settle in. So I always like in the morning especially to kind of stretch a little bit. <clears throat> so any little wiggles that you want to get out, go ahead and explore just little bits of movement. And then as you're ready, just find stillness. So sit up nice and tall, maybe even visualize your spine and see it lengthening. Think of creating space in between each little vertebra in your spine. Lengthen through the back of your neck, draw up through the crown of your head, and then relax and soften through your face and your shoulders. You can place your hands just on your lap. Hands can come to your heart. Maybe even one hand to heart space, one hand to belly. So whatever just kind of helps you settle in and connect with yourself, with this moment. So just start to notice everything that's creating this moment as it is right now. So not trying to change or fix or control anything, but just paying more attention, becoming more aware. Start to notice more how your body feels, not just physically, but energetically, emotionally. So what's going on inside of you? You don't have to label anything. You don't have to understand exactly what anything is. Just feel it, just experience it, just take it in. Just notice. So sometimes I feel tightness in my chest or in my upper abdomen and rather than figuring out what that is I just let it be I just experience it I just bring awareness to it so take a moment to just notice how you are what's going on inside of you this morning I think this is the most important part of our yoga practice is just taking a moment to tune in that's what makes yoga different than any other physical activity we do is we take this extra time to become present Pay more attention. Start to bring more awareness to your breath. And then we'll drop into our bodies, drop into our practice with three great big huge breaths. So next time you inhale, fill up as big as you can and hold in fullness. See if you can sit up a little taller, broaden through the fronts of your shoulders, take up more space energetically. And then when you're ready, big open mouth sigh, let it go. Ah. Do that a couple more times. So inhale, fill up, hold at the top, sip in just that little bit more, hold. And when you're ready, big sigh, let it go. Let's do that just one more time. So biggest inhale of your morning. Hold in fullness. And any stress you're holding, any heaviness you're holding, anything that no longer serves you, imagine you can just breathe it out. So big, huge exhale, let it go. Ah. Now, seal your lips and start to engage your ujjayi breath. So I say engage because you are putting a little bit of effort behind your breath. You are using the muscles in your chest, in your ribs, in your belly to expand and contract. So as you exhale, you're pushing the air out using those muscles and see if you can find emptiness at the bottom of each exhalation and find the deepest part of yourself, a connection to your very center. So at the end of each exhale, navel draws towards your spine you feel that little bit of engagement, what we call Udiyana Bandha. 
So you can take as much time as you want. This is your morning seated meditation. Be here for as long as it feels beneficial to you. And then when you feel ready to add some movement, you can stay in your seat if you want to and just start exploring movement from there. But eventually, we'll come forward to our hands and our knees. So no rush at all. But when you're ready, tabletop position, and that's where you're going to explore more intuitive movement from. So if you come to my classes often, you know this is how I've been starting almost every class these days. It's become my favorite thing during COVID or during quarantine to just move my body in a way that feels good, in a way that feels intuitive. So for some reason in our culture, we all feel really uncomfortable with moving our bodies without direction. It makes us feel weird or self-conscious. So close your eyes and just allow yourself to explore the mobility in your spine, in your shoulders, in your hips. I like to think of animals. So animals, nobody tells them how to move. They just figure it out. So downward facing dog, if you've ever seen a down dog done by an actual dog, nobody told them it was a yoga pose. They just felt into that stretch. They lengthen through their spine because it feels good. So think of exploring your body as if you're an animal, as if you're a four-legged creature. We'll figure out all the different ways in which you can move. Figure out all the different ways in which you can create more space, more length, more mobility. And use your breath to explore. So spacious inhalations and long, strong exhalations. Nice job, you guys. And give yourself about three to five more rounds somewhere in there. Make it feel good. Notice whatever there is to notice. Feel whatever there is to feel. And then eventually we will all meet back in downward facing dog pose. So get there in your own time, even in your own way. So if you want to move through a vinyasa, if you want to take a hovering tabletop with your knees hovering for just a moment, and then very slowly lift your hips and press them back, that's one way sometimes I like to move into my down dog. So your choice and then how you want to get there. And then once you're there, Take a few breaths to explore from this position. So for a moment in your down dog, let go of alignment and just feel into it. Move through your shoulders, move through your hips. Maybe let your back round as you press the ground away, lift up to your tiptoes and then lengthen your spine as you press your heels back. So just moving almost like you're doing a little dance on your mat from the position of down dog. And then slowly start to settle in a little bit more. So start to bring more awareness to the alignment of your body. Make sure your hands are at least shoulder width distance apart, fingers spreading nice and wide, and then see if you can feel your shoulders plug into their sockets. Rather than pressing back from your shoulder girdle and hyperextending, so if you do wanna look at me, I'll show you exactly what that looks like when I hyperextend. So just like this. So think of plugging your shoulders in and then press back through your heart rather than from your shoulders. So shoulders stay strong. And then feel that lift coming from your center. Like I always say, that invisible rope is pulling up on your belly button. It's tugging up towards the ceiling, tugging towards the back of the room. See if you can feel your huge breaths moving through you. Let's take one more big inhale. And then exhale, gaze to the top of your mat. Step, tiptoe, or hop, forward fold. Give yourself a moment here just to be in your fold. So feet hips width distance apart or maybe a little bit wider. All 10 toes face directly forward. And then if you want, you can take a ragdoll pose, grab opposite elbows. You can bring your hands behind your head, interlace your fingers. Maybe you want to keep your fingertips on the ground and crawl your hands over to one side and then the other. 
So whatever calls to you, notice where you're holding the weight in your feet. Try not to rock back into your heels. Keep your weight slightly forward. You can have a little or a big bend in your knees. Imagine you're trying to lift your sit bones, lift your butt up towards the sky as you reach the crown of your head towards the ground. Take a couple more breaths. Next time you breathe in, halfway lift, spinal extension, lengthen. Exhale, let it go, fold. Do that one more time. Inhale, halfway lift, so crown reaches forward, tops of thighs press back, sit bones broaden. Exhale, fold. And then your choice, roll or reverse swan dive all the way up to stand. As you inhale, take your arms up, maybe even take your gaze up. And exhale, hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra. Good. Inhale, high mountain, reach up. Exhale, slow swan dive. So lead with your heart, hinge at your hips, lengthen your spine, then fold. Inhale, spinal extension, Ardha Uttanasana. Feel your back muscles hug around your spine. Exhale, fold. Now this time, reverse swan dive, so press into your feet, lead with your heart, inhale, reach your arms up, stretch tall, exhale, hands to heart center. One more round, just like that, inhale, high mountain. Exhale, ride your breath down, so traction out your spine, take your time, at the very end of your exhale, let it go, fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. And if you want, just for fun, see if you can reach your arms out to the right and to the left as you lift. Exhale, bow, let it go. Now press into your feet, lead with your heart, reach your arms out to the right and left, feel your back muscles hug around your spine, then reach up at the top, breathe in. Exhale, hands to heart center. All right, inhale, take your arms to the sky, and then Bring your big toes to touch, little gap in between your heels, squeeze through your inner thighs. We're gonna twist to the right, don't let your hips move. So left arm forward, right arm back. Your hips should be facing directly forward, so don't let your left hip kind of crank forward with you. Keep your hips nice and square, squeeze through your inner thighs and feel this twist coming from your center. You can stay here or to take it a little further, wrap your arms around your body. So left hand grabs the outside of your right hip, right arm wraps behind you and you kind of wrap your hand around to the front of your left hip. And you can use your arms as leverage to square off your hips even more and then twist from your belly button, gaze back over your right shoulder. So it's like as you're twisting to the right, you're pulling your hips forward and slightly to the breath. Inhale, unwind, reach your arms to the sky. Squeeze your inner thighs and exhale, twist to the left side. Right arm forward, left arm back. Make sure your right hip did not come with you. So hips are square, inner thighs squeeze. Stay here or wrap your arms around your hips. So right hand grabs the outside of your left hip, left arm wraps behind you. And then again, it's like you're twisting your upper body to the left and you're pulling your hips forward and to the right. So use your arms to help you work the twist a little bit more. Good, squeeze through your inner thighs, stand taller, breathe bigger, one more round. Inhale, come back to center, arms reach. Exhale, bring your hands behind your back and interlace your fingers. Roll your shoulders back and down, shoulder blades hug your spine. If you can, even press your palms together like they're suction cupped, and then imagine your elbows are magnetized. Try not to lock them out. Now keep that and start to lift your hands back away from your body. Maybe even little baby back bend. So lift your heart up and reach your knuckles down. Press your hips gently forward, but keep squeezing through your inner thighs to keep the tone through your low belly. Take one more inhale. Exhale, hands stay clasped, hinge at your hips, dive down. Take about three rounds with your fingers interlaced. Maybe walk your feet out wider, so hips width distance or even a little bit further apart, whatever feels best to you. So let your head hang, 
Let your neck relax and then lift your sit bones up, lift your knuckles up. Really work that stretch through the front of your shoulders. Bend your knees a little or even a lot if it's helpful. Take one more big deep breath. End of your exhale, hands to your low back, release your clasp, inhale, halfway lift. So lengthen your spine, maybe you reach your arms out to the right and left. Exhale, fold, plant your hands, step back to plank pose this time. So today, from our plank, we're going to go straight into side plank, Vashistasana. So right hand is your foundation, roll onto the baby toe edge of your right foot, left arm to the sky, lift your hips. If you want to modify, you're welcome to bring your right knee down. Now I'm going to stagger my feet, so I'm going to bring my left foot out in front of my right foot. Take one more big inhale here. And then as you exhale, you're going to thread your left arm underneath you, reach through to the opposite side. Inhale, come back up, left arm high, two more like that, exhale, thread your left arm through, keep your hips lifted, reach as far as you can, inhale, back up, and then one more, exhale, thread your left arm through, reach, reach, reach. Inhale, back up. Exhale, plank pose. Take an inhale at the top and exhale to slowly lower. Inhale, baby cobra. So lift your chest using back strength rather than arm strength. Exhale, let it go. Spider-Man cobra. So bring your hands out wide, lift to fingertips, elbows face the sky. Breathe in, lift up. And exhale, twist to the right, dip your left shoulder down. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, other side, twist to the left, dip your right shoulder down. Inhale, back to center, lift your heart, tone your belly. Exhale, release. Plant your hands, so bring your hands to frame your mid ribs. Tuck your toes under. If you can, in one strong movement, press up to high plank and then back to downward facing dog give yourself about three or four breaths here so lengthening from fingertips all the way up to your hips strong through your shoulders connected through your center breathe bigger deeper more spaciously feel whatever there is to feel going on inside your body let's take just one more big inhale and then exhale, gaze forward, step, tiptoe, or hop, forward fold. Halfway lift with your inhalation, lengthen. Exhale, fold, bow. Now root through your feet, take it all the way up. Inhale, stretch your arms to the sky. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, reach your arms up. And again, bring your big toes to touch, little gap in between your heels. This time, exhale, sit back into a chair pose with your hands at your heart. So take a moment, weight is in your heels, squeeze through your inner thighs, lift your heart up, and tone through your low abdominals. So think of pulling your navel towards your spine. Now I want you to keep your hands right at your heart. So we're twisting from our belly button. Take one more inhale. And then as you exhale, lean slightly forward and twist to the right so your left elbow hovers over your right knee. Stay here, take a full round. See if you can twist a little bit further. Inhale, come back to chair pose, lift your heart. Exhale, twist to the left, right elbow hovers over your left knee. Hold here, full breath. Use your exhale to twist, so you're using your abdominal strength. Squeeze your inner thighs. Inhale, back to center. One more time, exhale to the right. Full breath, lengthen your spine. Squeeze your inner thighs. Exhale, use your core to twist. Nice work, last time, inhale, center. Exhale to the left. So try not to use the leverage of your arms. Use the strength in your core, full around here. Squeeze your inner thighs, inhale back to center, high mountain, so reach all the way up. Exhale, little baby back bend, cactus your arms, lift your heart. Inhale, arms re-extend, realign your spine. 
and then exhale, slow swan dive down forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe in. If you want, reach your arms out to the right and left. Feel your back muscles hug around your spine. Exhale, fold. Now plant your hands, step back to plank. From your plank, this time we've got side plank on our left hand. Roll to the baby toe edge of your left foot, right arm to the sky. Left knee can come down if you want to modify. And again, I'm going to stagger my feet, so right in front of left. Lift your hips super high. Reach your right arm as high as possible. Reach through your fingertips. One more inhale. Exhale, thread your right arm underneath you. Keep your hips high, so reach as far as you can. Good, inhale, come back up. Reach up, lift your hips. Exhale again, thread your right arm through. Draw navel to spine, empty out. Inhale, back up. And then one more time, exhale. Thread your right arm through, reach, 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 reach. Inhale, back up. And exhale, plank or modify plank. Inhale at the top of your push-up. Exhale to slowly lower. Inhale, baby cobra. Lift your heart, use your back strength. Elbows point straight back behind you. Exhale, let it go. Spider-Man cobra, hands out wide. Lift to your fingertips, elbows face the sky. Inhale, lift your chest. One more time, little twist to the right. Exhale. Dip your left shoulder down. Inhale, come back to center. And exhale, twist to the left, right shoulder dips. Inhale, back to center. Nice, you guys. Exhale, let it go. Bring your hands to frame your mid ribs. Tuck your toes under. If you can, through your reverse push up and then back to down dog. If you want to modify, you can move through tabletop or child's pose instead. Completely up to you. All right, from your dog pose, next time you inhale, take your right leg to the sky. So pause here. Keep your hips square for now. Inner thighs face each other. Press up and back through your right foot. Press forward and down through your hands. Now, here's just a little challenge for you if you want to take it. Really, really root down into your right hand and start to crawl your left hand back a little bit. So about halfway back and then lift up to your left fingertips. So really think of pressing down through your right hand, lifting through your belly button, press up through your right foot. Now you can stay here or here's your great big challenge. See if you can lift your left hand off the ground, reach it up and back. So you're balancing right hand, left foot. You're connected to your center. Press up with your right foot. Reach through those left fingertips. Take one more breath. End of your exhale, set your left hand back down. Take one more inhale to lengthen. Exhale, right knee, left elbow. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Inhale, three-legged dog. And exhale, knee to your nose. So scoop out your belly and then ever so softly step your right foot to the top of your mat. You're in lunge position. Front knee over your front ankle, high on the ball of your back foot. Rise when you're ready. Crescent lunge. So take a moment to find stability here. Think of pulling your right hip slightly back, left hip slightly forward. Tone those low abdominals. Lift your chest. Reach through your fingertips. Soften your face and breathe. So take a moment to just feel what it feels like to be in crescent lunge this morning. Feel into your body. Take one more in breath. And as you exhale, we're going to turbo twist to the right. So back knee bends and hovers. Left arm forward, right arm back. So squeeze through your inner thighs, twist from your belly button. If you want a challenge, see if you can gaze back over your right fingertips. If you want an even bigger challenge, see if you can kiss the ground with your back knee. Twist a little further, take one more breath. Now listen, end of your exhale, wrap your right arm behind your back, turn your shoulders to face forward, Exalted warrior. So back knee can stay bent or you can straighten your back leg. Reach your left arm up. 
lift your heart and start to create a little back bend, tone your low belly. Breathe. So strong through your belly and then feel your back muscles hug around your spine, lift your heart higher. Take one more big inhale. Now listen, exhale, left hand to the ground inside your right foot, right arm to the sky, revolve, lunge. So your legs are strong. Back leg especially, squeeze through your inner thighs, twist from your belly button. You can stay here or without collapsing through your legs, so legs stay strong, walk your left hand, or I like to stay up on my left fingertips, walk your left hand off the left side of your yoga mat, and then reach your right fingertips way, way back. So it's like you're trying to turn your heart to look up at the sky. Squeeze your inner thighs. Keep your back leg powerful and strong, even your back foot. Feel this twist coming from your mid, moving into your upper back. Take one more full breath, your fullest expression. End of your exhale, unwind, wide-legged forward fold. So bring your hands over the left side of your mat. Straighten out your legs, parallel your feet. Halfway lift, breathe in. Bring a little micro bend into your knees here. Think of sticking your butt out behind you and reaching the crown of your head forward. Now see if you can reach your arms out to the right and left. Palms face the ground. Imagine you're trying to press your arms up towards the ceiling as you press your chest down. So lengthen. If you can, straighten your legs all the way by lifting your sit bones up and pressing the tops of your thighs back. Take one more inhale, think of breathing in all directions. Exhale, fold. About five rounds, go wherever you wanna go. So you can hold, find stillness, follow the movement of your breath inside your body, or explore any movement that you want. You can go for headstand, skandasana, handstand hops, Totally up to you. Big breath. So rather than tuning out here, tune in. Notice more. Connect more deeply with your body, with your breath. Awesome, you guys. Good poses. Good variations. Take about two more rounds. Next time you inhale, rise to a halfway lift position. You can just have your fingertips on the ground. Crawl your hands to the top of your yoga mat. Rotate your toes to face forward. All right, so from here, we're going to uh, bring our right foot back to a three-legged plank position. Now gently set your left knee on the ground and then reach your left arm forward so you're in a spinal balance now. Right leg back, left arm forward. All right, draw your belly button in and up so you feel connected to your center. Take one more big inhale, pull yourself apart. Exhale, bend your right knee, heel towards your right butt cheek, left arm reaches back, lift your heart gaze forward. You can stay here or grab hold of your right foot, kick foot into hand, pull hand back into foot, squeeze through your inner thighs. Good job, you guys. Tone your low belly, feel your back muscles hug around your spine, see if you can lift even higher, spread your right toes, take two more rounds. End of your next exhale, back to spinal balance. So left arm forward, right leg back. Exhale, elbow to knee, curl in, round your spine. <sighs> Inhale, re-extend, lengthen. And one more time, elbow to knee, round, hollow out, empty out. Inhale, lengthen. And then exhale, set just your left hand down, pivot on your left knee. Right arm to the sky, modified side plank. Reach your right arm forward so like you're reaching past the top edge of your mat. Make your back leg strong like you're karate kicking the air with your back foot. Stay here if you want to, or bend to your right knee, reach back, grab hold of your right foot. Kick foot into hand, pull hand back into foot. Turn your heart to look up. So let your shoulders open, 
back muscles hug around your spine, breathe down into your belly. About two more rounds. Fullest expression you can find in this moment. Good job, my friends. End of your next exhalation. Slowly release, unwind. Come back to your hands and your knees. So just hands and knees position. Now bring your left leg. So let's just lift our left leg up first, reach it back. And then you're gonna swing it out to the left and set your left foot down so your left toes are facing forward. So it's kind of like you're in a half wide-legged straddle position. Now, left leg is extended out to the left. Reach your right arm out to the right and all the way up to the sky. Open up through the right side of your chest, breathe in. Exhale, thread your right arm underneath you. Reach through like you're trying to grab hold of your left big toe. And then you can do whatever you want with your left hand. So I like to walk my left hand forward, lift to my left fingertips, my left elbow points up towards the sky. And then I use that as leverage to twist and gaze underneath my left armpit. You might wrap your left arm behind your back. Anywhere you want to take this, about three to five more breaths. See if you can feel your breath. Move through your upper back, mid back, low back. Take your exhales all the way to emptiness. Breathe slower, deeper, more smoothly. Last couple rounds. If you want, you can exhale out your mouth. Leave your left leg extended out to the left, but bring your left hand back to the ground if it happens to be lifted. Next time you inhale, unthread your right arm, reach it all the way up. Maybe come up to your left fingertips and see if you can reach even higher. Exhale, bring your right hand down. Now, rather than thinking of rounding your spine, think of a cow pose, so like you're trying to keep a little arch through your spine. And we're just going to press our hips back almost like you're going into child's pose. And then bring your hips up and kind of press your hips slightly forward, almost like you're going into up dog or cobra. Do that a few times. So exhale, hips back, try not to round. And then inhale, come forward. Keep a little tone in your belly as you let your hips drop towards the ground. So at your own time and pace. If you want, you can let your left toes point up towards the ceiling. Just keep a flex in your foot and keep your ankles strong. So as your hips go back, maybe your toes point up. So just working the mobility through our hips and through our groin. Take one or two more, forward and back. And use your breath. Good job, my friends. And then as you're ready, just come back to a neutral spine position. Bring your left knee to the ground and take it back to downward facing dog. Take a moment to walk it out. And if you'd like to move through a regular vinyasa and just kind of reset, you are more than welcome to. Otherwise, stay in down dog for a couple breaths. Pedal it out, explore a little bit or find stillness. Focus on those little tiny adjustments on the inside. All righty, from your down dog. Next inhale, take your left leg back and up. So pause here for a moment. Hips are square, inner thighs face each other. I don't care how high your left leg goes, but make it straight, strong, and powerful. Press up and back with your left foot. Press forward and down through your hands. Now, you can stay here if you want, this is your pose, or start to kind of crawl your right hand back so it's about halfway between your left hand and your right foot. Lift up to your right fingertips so your right hand gets a lot lighter on the ground. Stay here or play with your teeter-totter balance. See if you can reach your right hand back and up. Keep your hips lifted, stay connected to your center. Keep breathing. Press with your left foot, hug in with your inner thighs. Lift 
lift through your belly button. One more breath. End of your exhale. Set your right hand back down. Three-legged dog. Inhale. Lengthen. Exhale. Left knee, right elbow. Your little twist. Inhale, three-legged dog, re-extend. Exhale, left knee, left elbow, or as high as you can get on your arm. Inhale, three-legged dog. Last one, knee to your nose, scoop out your belly, then softly step your left foot through, low lunge. When you're ready, rise up to crescent. So take a moment, find stability. Hip square, inner thighs squeeze, back leg strong. Reach up, lift through your heart, maybe even gaze slightly up. Tone through your low abdominals. Soften your face, soften your outer shell. Feel your breath, feel your body in this posture. So find a sense of calm around the posture. Take one more inhale. Exhale, turbo twist to the left. So back knee bends and hovers. Right arm forward, left arm back. Squeeze through your inner thighs. Tone your belly and see if you can twist further. If you want a challenge, gaze back over your left fingertips. If you want more of a challenge, back knee gently kisses the ground. Take one more round. Twist, twist, twist as you exhale. End of your exhale, left arm wraps behind your back. Shoulders face forward, so square off your shoulders. Right arm reaches up, and then start to create a little baby back bend. Think chest towards your chin, and then take your throat back. Back knee can be bent or back leg straight, whatever feels best for you. Tone your belly, lift your heart, breathe. Fullest expression, lift and open. One more round. End of your exhale, bring your right hand to the ground inside your left foot, reach your left arm to the sky, revolve lunge. So back leg is strong, squeeze through your inner thighs. Imagine you want to pull your left hip back towards the back of your mat, but at the same time your left knee hugs towards your right armpit. Stay here if you want, or without collapsing through your legs or your hips, Walk your right hand off the right side of your mat. Reach your left fingertips back. Turn your heart to look up. Legs stay strong. Breathe down into your belly. Open through your heart and the front of your shoulders. One more round. Legs strong. Breathe deeper. End of your exhale. Unwind. Hands over to the right side of your yoga mat. Parallel your feet. Straighten out your legs. Wide legged straddle position. Inhale, lift up halfway. Bring a little micro bend into your knees. And imagine again that you're sticking your butt out, reaching the top of your head forward. Take your arms out to the right and left, palms face the ground. If you want more this time, reach your arms straight forward like you're doing warrior three arms. So palms face each other. Everybody imagine you're trying to press your arms up and your chest down. Maybe straighten your legs by lifting your sit bones, pressing the tops of your thighs back. Don't let your spine round wherever you're at. Take one more big, huge in-breath. And exhale, release. Wide-legged fold anywhere you want to go. About five rounds. So explore or be still. Make sure your breath is right there with you. So rather than tuning out or checking out, now is your time to check in to go deeper. Maybe you widen your stance a little bit. Maybe you bend one knee and then the other. Headstand, handstand hops, heel lifts. Feel your breath, make it more powerful, more vibrant. Stay right here, so connected to this moment, connected to your breath, to your body, <sighs> noticing, feeling, observing. Take a couple more rounds. You guys are awesome. Next time you inhale, lift up halfway, fingertips just on the ground this time, and then slowly walk your hands to the top of your mat, 
Rotate your toes to face forward so you're in a low lunge position. Extend your left leg back so you're in a three-legged plank position, and then just very gently bring your right knee to the ground. Now, extend your right arm forward, spinal balance. And you might need to kind of adjust, so if you need to scoot your hands back so your hands are underneath your shoulders, and then extend your right arm forward, feel free. So right arm forward, left arm back, hip square, belly button is drawing up towards your spine. Now, take one more inhale, see if you can lengthen even more. Exhale, reach your right arm back, bend your left knee, heel towards your butt. Lift your heart, gaze forward. Stay here if you want, or if you can, grab hold of your left foot. Squeeze through your inner thighs. Kick foot into hand, pull hand back into foot. Lift your heart, tone your low belly, back muscles hug around your spine. Give it everything you've got for two more deep breaths. Breathe even bigger. Take your exhales all the way to empty. End of your exhale, release spinal balance. So right arm forward, left arm back, inhale. Exhale, elbow to knee, curl in. <sighs> Inhale, lengthen. Like you're moving through molasses, slowly with control. Exhale, elbow to knee. Hollow out. Good. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bring just your right hand down. Pivot on your right knee so right foot comes to the outside of your mat. And then left arm to the sky. Modified side plank. So left leg is extended back. It's really strong. All the little muscles are engaged. Take your left arm forward. So lengthen from left fingertips back to your left foot. Perfect place to stay or final option. Bend your left knee, reach back, grab hold of your left foot, kick foot into hand, pull hand back into foot, rotate your heart to look up, press your hips gently forward. Breathe down into your belly. Couple more rounds, your fullest expression. Give it everything you've got. Soften around it, soften your face. End of your next exhale, release. Tabletop position, so hands and knees. And then lift your right leg up and extend your right leg out to the right. So swing your right leg out to the right and then set your foot down. I'm gonna kind of move off my mat because I'm so close to the wall. So right toes face directly forward. It's like you're in a half wide-legged straddle position. Inhale, take your left arm out to the left and all the way up. Try to open through the left side of your chest. Exhale, thread your left arm underneath you. Reach through like you're trying to grab hold of your right big toe. If it's available for you to grab your right big toe with your peace fingers, go for it. Otherwise, maybe you come up to your right fingertips, press the ground away, gaze under your right armpit. Maybe you wrap your right arm behind your back. So your variation, big deep breaths. Breathe into your upper back, mid back, and low back. Exhale all the way to empty. Feel that connection to your center. Take about three more rounds. Good job, my friends. Last couple breaths. Leave your right leg extended out to the right, but bring your right hand back to the ground. And then next time you inhale, unthread your left arm. And again, reach it all the way up. Open up. Reach as high as you can. Exhale, left hand down. And then without rounding your spine, we're going to rock forward and back. So reach your hips back. And then come up and kind of press your hips down. Lift your heart. Tone your belly. And then hips back. Rather than rounding, think of a cow pose, a little arch through your spine. And come forward. You can move at your own time and pace. And as you press your hips back, you're welcome to rotate your right toes to face up towards the ceiling. Press through the back of your heel. Flex your toes back towards your shin. So stay active. 
through your right foot if you do take that little variation. Take a couple more rounds, just working the mobility in our hips and our groin. Good job, you guys. And when you feel complete here, come back to a neutral spine, set your right knee down, downward facing dog. Take it back. And again, if you want to move through a vinyasa, just kind of reset, feel free. Otherwise, take a moment, just walk it out in your down dog. Reconnect to your strong ujjayi breath. Let's all take one more inhale into our downward facing dog. And then exhale, gaze to the top of your mat. Step, tiptoe, or hop, forward fold. Once you have arrived, inhale to a halfway lift, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Root through your feet, rise all the way up to stand. Inhale, stretch your arms to the sky, gaze up. Exhale, hands to heart. All right, my friends, we're gonna play with balance for a moment. Inhale, reach your arms up. Now root into your left foot, right heel towards your right butt cheek. So bend your right knee, bring your heel towards your butt. Bring your left hand back to grab the top of your right foot. So once you have that, then kind of realign, hug in with your inner thighs, tone your belly, stand up tall. If this is hard, this can be right where you stay. Just practice your balance here. Open your left shoulder and get that nice stretch for your right quad. Next step, hinge at your hips. Start to kick your foot into your hand, your hand back into your foot. You're in a twisted dancer pose. We did this already on our hands and our knees. Now you're just balanced on one foot. Try to lift your heart like you're doing a little baby cobra. Tone your low belly, squeeze through your inner thighs. Spread your toes, take two more rounds. If you fall out, no big deal. Come back in when you're ready. I know it's challenging, keep breathing. One last breath. We're gonna come out as slow as possible. So slowly come back to an upright position. Let go of your right foot standing staff. So right knee out in front of you. Keep your knee bent or extend your right leg forward. Press out through your heel. Take one more big inhale, stand as tall as you can. Exhale, set your right foot down. Dive down, forward fold. We're gonna move through a vinyasa before we take the other side. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, plant your hands, step or hop back vinyasa your way. So you can add push-ups. You can take an extra breath or two in your back bend. Knee back in downward facing dog. Reconnect your breath. Big inhale into your dog pose. Exhale, gaze forward, step or float, forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe in, lengthen. Exhale, bow, let it go. Root through your feet, take it all the way up. Inhale, stretch, arms to the sky. Exhale, hands to heart center. All right, other side, inhale, high mountain. Now root down into your right foot. Bend your left knee, left heel towards your left butt cheek. Find your balance here. Bring your right hand back to grab the top of your left foot. So I have to kind of curve my body in a weird way to get hold of my foot, but then realign. So hug in with your inner thighs, tone your belly. Think of hugging your knees, both of your knees towards midline. This might be where you stay. Open through your right shoulder, stretch that left quad. Or next step, hinge at your hips. So keep a little micro bend in your standing leg. Start to kick, foot into hand, pull hand back into foot, twisted dancer pose. Hug in with your inner thighs, lift your heart like a little baby cobra. Breathe, two more rounds, fullest expression. Fall out and come back in when you're ready. It's part of the practice. Spread your toes, soften your face. One last round, fullest expression. 
We're gonna meet in standing staff, so nice and easy. Come back upright. Left knee out in front of you, both arms to the sky. Hug in with your inner thighs. If you want, you can extend your left leg forward. Take one more inhale, reach as high as you can. Exhale, set your left foot down. Dive down forward, fold, nice job. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, plant your hands, step back, vinyasa your way or skip it. We'll meet you back in down dog. Alrighty, my friends, from your dog pose, inhale your right leg high. Open up your right hip, so bend your right knee, reach your right knee out to the right, then up towards the ceiling. Keep both shoulders strong, both hands rooted. You can stay here, or listen, this is where we're going to get really crazy. Walk your left hand back a little bit, lift up to your left fingertips. So get lighter on your left hand. Now, if you can, lift your left hand up, reach it back, possibly grab hold of the top of your right foot. Once you've got it, see if you can lift your right knee higher. I know this is craziness. I can't really do it either, so don't feel bad. So stretch through the front of your right quad. The hardest part is finding your foot most of the time. <laughs> Take one more full round. Let your body wobble, that's part of it. End of your exhale, bring your left hand back down, extend your right leg, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, pigeon pose. So right shin, top of your mat. Set your body down, settle in. So right knee a little bit wider, wider than your right hip. Pull your right hip up and back, left hip forward. So think of pulling both hips towards midline and plugging your femur bones into the socket. So we're not sinking into our joints. We want to stretch our muscles. So once you have those femur bones plugged in, start your bow forward, humble pigeon. Even as you bow, pull your right hip back, left, left knee can scoop back a little bit if you want to take it deeper. If there's a different variation of pigeon that you would rather take, choice is yours. You've got about five to seven breaths. Send your breath down into your outer right hip. Soften with your exhalations. Exhale out your mouth anytime you'd like. Last couple rounds. Let go of any resistance you're holding. Let yourself just melt into the posture. One last breath. And then nice and easy, begin to lift your upper body. We'll meet back in three-legged down dog. So tuck your left toes under. Press down through your hands, right leg back and up. Give your right leg a nice little shake out. And if you would like, option to flip your dog. Just an option, so don't feel like you have to. Might feel nice as a counter pose, it's up to you. If you're in wild thing or flip dog, take a couple breaths there, work the back bend. And then everybody eventually regular downward facing dog, walk it out. 
If you want to move through a vinyasa, please feel free. Reconnect to your strong, deep breath. All right, my friends, from your dog pose. Next, inhale, left leg to the sky. Exhale, bend your left knee, open your left hip, so squeeze your outer left glutes, lift your left knee towards the sky. If you want to walk your hands back just like a half inch to an inch, feel free, that might help you get your right foot a little bit more stable pressing into the ground. Just keep the length in your spine. Now, stay where you're at. This is a great place to stay or walk your right hand back. So about halfway between your left hand and your right foot. Lift up to your right fingertips, get lighter on your right hand. And then here comes the crazy part. See if you can lift your right hand up, reach it back, possibly grab hold of your left foot. And then lift your left knee even higher. Woo! Kick foot into hand. It's so hard, so if you can't get it, don't feel bad, we're just playing. Kick foot into hand, pull hand back into foot. This side is proving to be much harder for me. Lift from your center. Take one more breath wherever you're at. <laughs> and then bring your right hand back down. Extend your left leg high, breathe in. Exhale, pigeon pose. Left shin forward. Take a moment, find your alignment. So if there was a ruler at the front of your hips, you'd want both hips to be up against that ruler. You want your hips straight across from each other. Tone your low belly. Femur bones plugged into their sockets. Bow forward as you're ready. Breathe all the way down into your outer left hip. Take about four or five more slow, deep breaths. See if you can make your exhales last a little bit longer than your inhales. Left hip is still pulling back and up. Maybe scoot your back knee back a little bit further. Last couple breaths. Exhale out your mouth if you'd like. friends let's slowly start our transition back to our three-legged down dog so as you're ready left leg back and up give it that nice little shake out and if you want to flip your dog give yourself a couple deep breaths in your back bend open through your heart open through the front of your hips Meet back in one final down dog. And if you want to take one final vinyasa, please feel free. Otherwise, just walk it out for a couple more breaths. Let's take one more huge inhalation into our dog pose. Lift your hips higher, lengthen your side bodies more. Exhale, set your knees down gently. Find your way down onto your back. So whichever direction you want to face with your head is fine with me. Once you're down on your back, just hug your knees in. 
Find a gentle rock from side to side. Keep your right knee drawn in and extend your left leg forward, set it down on the ground. Supine spinal twist. So reach your right arm out to the right. Scoot your hips slightly over to the right. Roll over onto your left side. Gaze up or over your right shoulder. Try to keep the backs of both shoulders rooted to the ground. So probably your right shoulder will lift a little bit, but just have the intention of keeping it anchored down. Like there's a heavy sandbag on top of your right shoulder. Chest square towards the ceiling. And then here's just an option if you want to try it. Left hand to the outside of your right thigh. And then as you press down with your left hand, press up with your right leg. So you're pressing your left hand into your leg. You're pressing your leg back into your hand. So you're actually creating a deeper stretch and you're also creating stability as you create mobility. So the best of both worlds. Take about three more breaths. Exhales take you all the way to emptiness and allow yourself to just melt, to just twist a little further. So the ground is your friend in this posture. It's helping you with your alignment. It's giving you some gentle leverage to push back into. Nice work, you guys. And then slowly roll back onto your spine. Make sure your hips are straight down from your shoulders. So adjust if you need to. Take your right knee all the way up towards your right armpit. Hands around the front of your right shin. Give your leg a big squeeze in and up. And then half happy baby with your right leg. So sole of your right foot to the sky. Grab hold of your foot, outer edge if possible. Flex your toes. Pull down with the strength in your arm. As you flex your toes, press up through your heel. Neutralize your spine, backs of your shoulders, backs of your hips are rooted. Now your invisible heavy sandbag is in, on top of your left thigh. Take one more deep breath. And then release your right leg. Take it out next to the left leg, full body stretch. So arms long, legs long, pull yourself apart. Big, huge inhale. Exhale, draw your left knee in, scoot your hips over to the left, reach your left arm out to the left, roll to your right side, supine spinal twist, gaze up or over your left shoulder, and if you want, right hand to the outside of your left thigh, press down, and then with your left thigh, press up into your right hand. When I do that, I usually get a nice little crack in my back that feels really good too, so just play with those little tiny adjustments sometimes those littlest micro adjustments are what make the biggest difference in what you're actually getting out of the posture so that's what I find so interesting about yoga is we can go through the exact same practice go through the same motions but depending on how much your awareness how much awareness you're cultivating how much you're using your breath how much effort you're putting in we can get something completely different out of it and there's no right or wrong not one is better than the other it's just what you put in is what you'll get out so what do you want from your practice today and how are you going to explore that and be curious about that Sometimes I feel like just being softer or lazier in my practice just because of that. that's how I'm feeling that day and that's fine. So always, always listening to your body, to what you need. Think of all of my cues as invitations. Good job, you guys. And then... End of your next exhale, let's roll back to center, back onto our spines, adjust your hips so your hips are straight down from your shoulders, left knee up towards your left armpit, hands around the front of your shins, squeeze in and up, in and up, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then half happy baby with your left leg. Flex your toes, press up through your heel, pull down with the strength in your left arm. 
neutral spine, heavy sandbag on top of your right thigh. Give yourself a couple breaths here. And then if you'd like to turn it into a full happy baby, please do. And you can explore that for a moment, maybe rock a little bit. Straighten one leg and then the other leg. And then if there are any more poses, any more movement stretches, anywhere else you want to go to complete your practice for you, please take a few moments to do so. And as you're ready, you guys, just start settling in to your final relaxation, your Shavasana. And as you get there, as you transition, so take your time, I have a reading for you. And this is, of course, by Jeff Foster, and it's called The Vow of Love. Let us commit to the field of love, not the form. Let us acknowledge that form changes, ebbs and flows as it must. We are lovers, we are friends, we are wedded, we are divorced, we are together, we are not, we are together again, we are partners, we are ex-partners, we live together, we do not, we are attracted to each other, the attraction wanes, then surges unexpectedly, we are bright and active, rosy-faced and full of hope, we are bed-bound and we need help to eat. Yet, we are full of hope. We take unexpected paths, change in unexpected ways, dance our unique dances in the field. We never stay still. We are alive. Is there a love that survives all these changes, even celebrates them? A love that embraces, yet does not cling? Is there a great field in which we can meet every day in sickness and in health? for richer or for poorer? Can we commit to the field itself and not get attached to a specific form? Can we shed all ideas of permanence and meet in the here and now, speaking from the heart today, listening from presence today, telling our truth today, no matter where it takes us tomorrow? Can we risk the loss of form in honor of the field? till death do us part? Is there a love so huge, so timeless, so present, so free from worldly conditions? So I love that because it's just a reminder that everything is impermanent and that things don't have to look a certain way forever and things don't have to look as we expect them to look always. So let go of any expectations of how this moment should be or how your life should be. And just allow whatever is to be there, to move through you. Allow whatever you feel to be welcomed, to be okay. Allow sadness, happiness, good and bad, comfortable and uncomfortable. So you are just this great wide open space or this field that gets to hold it all. No right or wrong, just this present moment, your loving awareness. So this is where I will leave you, you guys, in your Shavasana. Stay here as long as you would like. And when you feel ready, you can come out of your Shavasana and close your practice for yourself in whatever way resonates for you. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here, for taking time to step onto your mat this morning, 
to do your own inner work to connect with a deeper part of yourself it means the world to me to have you practice with me even on this online platform so thank you i love you have a wonderful rest of your day namaste